Hi, this is Victoria from CrushCrypto.com. In this video, I will be discussing what proof of stake is. This is part of our educational series where we will be exploring different areas of blockchain technology. The proof of stake consensus mechanism was first suggested in an online forum in 2011, but it was not formally introduced until a paper was published on it in 2012. Instead of relying on the energy-dependent computational work of miners to securely add blocks to the chain, the authors of the paper proposed a method of staking. This is where an algorithm would choose block validators based on the number of coins a person has. They proposed this method to try and tackle Bitcoin's increasing energy costs and mining difficulty that was going to continue indefinitely as long as it was profitable for miners to purchase more hash power. One of the authors, Sunny King, later created PureCoin based off this paper, the first cryptocurrency to implement a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. However, it used a hybrid proof-of-work and proof-of-stake system, considering that proof-of-stake was still an unproven mechanism with security concerns. Just like proof-of-work, proof-of-stake is a mechanism designed for deciding who gets to validate the current block and achieving consensus between the network's nodes on what data is valid. However, proof-of-work and proof-of-stake use completely different methods to achieve the same end goal. Proof-of-stake algorithms achieve consensus by requiring users to put a certain amount of their coins at stake in order to have a chance of being selected to validate a block of transactions and receiving that block reward. Malicious actors risk losing their stake. The more coins that are at stake, the higher chance the user will get to validate the next block and reap the block reward. Proof-of-stake validators are court foragers instead of miners. Putting coins at stake can be thought of as locking the coins in a virtual safe and using it as collateral to have the chance of validating a block. Holding coins in a wallet is not enough to be considered for validation, and once the coins are staked, there is a waiting period to withdraw them. If there is a malicious forger that tries to include faulty transactions in a block, they will lose all the coins that they have at stake. This is called slashing, and it ensures that validators are incentivized to act in an honest manner. A forger of a new block is chosen by two-part process. The first part considers how many coins a user is staking, while the second part varies between networks. One commonly used method for the second part is randomized block selection, where forgers are selected by looking for users with a combination of the lowest hash value and highest stake. Another method is coin age selection, which chooses validators based on highest stake and how long the coins have been staked for. As I discussed in my earlier video on proof-of-work, the main attack vector for the proof-of-work consensus mechanism is a 51% attack. As mining pools continue to grow and a small set of entities and mining pools control more and more of the miner supply, the easier a theoretical proof-of-work 51% attack becomes. In a proof-of-stake system, a 51% attack is also a possible attack vector. However, this type of attack requires a malicious actor to obtain 51% of more of the supply of that coin. In theory, this is a much more difficult and expensive task than pooling 51% of a network's mining power. Even if an attacker has enough funds to buy 51% or more of a coin's market cap, the purchasable supply at any time is well under 51% due to limited exchange liquidity. It would take a large amount of money and time to gather the resources in order to launch a 51% attack on a proof-of-stake system of a major coin. At the same time, the accumulation for the attacker would cause the coin's value to increase substantially, causing the attack to become more and more expensive. There is also a reduced incentive to launch a 51% attack on a proof-of-stake system, as the person suffering the most from it would be the attacker that is now the majority stakeholder in the network. So what are some of the benefits of using proof-of-stake? First of all, it uses an extremely low amount of computing power to secure the network when compared to proof-of-work resulting in greater energy savings. There is a lower chance of a 51% attack. In general, a proof-of-stake system is harder to launch a 51% attack than a proof-of-work system with the same market cap. There is also a lower barrier to entry. Any coin holder above a certain amount can enter the validator pool simply by staking their coins. There is no requirement to purchase mining equipment, set up a machine, and ensure it stays running in good condition. And lastly, proof-of-stake has built-in incentives. An attacker in a proof-of-stake system must have coins at stake, and their attack would directly devalue the coins that they own. In comparison with proof-of-work, mining equipment can be used to attack a network and will still hold the same monetary value after the attack and can be used to mine other coins. In terms of weaknesses, 
With proof of stake, if a small number of people own a significant portion of a coin's supply, they will have a higher chance of validating blocks and reaping all the rewards. This in turn increases their stake even more, which could lead to supply centralization over time. Proof of stake by itself is not an efficient way to achieve consensus as people staking can vote for multiple forks of a blockchain effortlessly. In proof of work, this is a far less likely scenario as validating blocks on multiple chains has a real world cost associated with energy. As a result, many proof of stake systems feature some combination of proof of stake and proof of work to ensure there is a final decision on the valid chain. There are still some major security concerns with proof of stake. As proof of stake is still a relatively new concept, researchers are finding ways to mitigate or eliminate these threats and improve the proof of stake mechanism and breakthroughs could potentially happen in the near future. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this brief overview video on the proof of stake consensus mechanism. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and join our Telegram group to receive our latest in our educational series and other updates. The invite link to our Telegram channel can be found in the video description. Hope you have a great day.